are these people? So I did want to get back and we're going to go back to our story here. And we're going to talk about another independent content creator who is featuring independent left news, but not part of INN. So we love him. And I, I, I think I may have even invited Orf at one point to join INN, but Orf is big time. Now, it's really funny that I'm doing this story because... I didn't realize until like basically yesterday that Jimmy Dore also not only covered the story, but had Orf on and I invited Orf to join us and not to call out Orf out. I love Orf and I totally get that why he's busy and whatever, but I, I've been a Patreon supporter and fan and uh, we've DM'd in the past and I was hoping maybe that if he wanted to come knowing that I was going to cover stuff that he would join us, but love you Orf. Totally get it. Appreciate you. No matter what, you do great work. Um and Crab's done some work with the work. Get your ass too. over here. But come on out and hang out sometime. Anyway. Yeah. Um you fucker. Does Reef share and mail his spare herb? Reef doesn't have Fuck any spare you. herb. Reef doesn't have any spare herb. Mm, Reef no, actually it's, needs it's weed money. So if you can go to Cash App, yeah. Dollar sign Reef Breland. <laughs> R-E-E-F <laughs> Breland. B-R-E-L-I-N. It's in the doobly doo in the description down below. You can always find that at drsmoke.cloud. Yes, it, it is at Dr. Dr. Smokey. Dr. Smokey. Cloud. Dot cloud. <laughs> I set up a, a yeah. URL that goes to that his <laughs> tree. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so, Orf got censored and Matt Taibbi is angry because it happened for Matt Taibbi's website, TK News. What happened? So, mm. we'll start out by telling you what happened on Thursday. So, on Thursday, I think this was. Election denial for me, but not for thee. YouTube censors TK produced videos again, despite factual accuracy. <laughs> right? He didn't lie. He didn't alter clips, removed key context. He made edits faithful to, to reality. Got a strike for it. Thank you, Nanny State. So, in late September, Matt Orfala or Orfale or at at O R F, okay, or zero R F on Twitter. Go follow him. Go give him a shout out. Go sub to him on Patreon. He's one of my favorites. He's fantastic. Uh, he inspires Joe. I know he inspires Turco Don. He's one of those guys that makes these cut videos that just they they punch you in the face. And we're gonna watch a couple of them today. So in late September, videographer Matt Orfalo made a pair of videos for TK. One memory hold the election was hacked. Simple montage of Democratic politicians, media officials, enforcement officials saying the 2016 election was, among other things quote, illegitimate, quote, rigged, quote, hacked, and a, quote, cyber 9-11. I have to say, quote, I want to be very careful. YouTube, don't take my channel down. The second one, titled Memory Hold Part 2, the, quote, unquote, rigged election, was a similar exercise with one exception that it compared the post-2020 statements of Donald Trump to post-2016 of Democratic partisans. When Trump tells Chris Wallace, I have to see, I have to see, when asked if he'd concede the election, Orff shows Hillary Clinton saying, no, I would not accept. When asked in 2017, after, after her loss, that she'd contest the results. No, I would not. Okay. He, he shows Trump later saying he'll, of course, respect the results if I win. And Hillary Clinton saying Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances. Quote. Essentially exact mm -hmm. analogs, right? And here's a tweet from yep. Orff. Showing, you know, that, that YouTube pulled his, his video down. And thank thanks so much for that, YouTube. Oh, shut the fuck up. Shitlib is in the house. Okay, Joe has entered the chat. What's up, Joe? YouTube initially tried to demonetize both videos, but after a fuss, they reversed the decision about the first one. But now they've taken a more drastic step, not only deleting the second video, but two earlier rough cut versions that were never even shown to the public, but lived on his site, I believe as drafts. This is another mad feature of the content moderation era. You can be censored and punished for pre-publication thinking just for the fact that they think that you might put that out and make that public. They also gave him a content strike, leaving him just two away from being removed completely from the site, which would effectively put him out of business. And this is pretty much the story that he tells to Jimmy Dore. And Jimmy's focused on the 2020-2016 and the hypocrisy here. So YouTube's decision claims that the second video contains Claims that U.S. the past presidential elections were rigged or stolen, and our election integrity policy prohibits 
content that advances false claims that widespread fraud, errors, or glitches occurred in U.S. presidential elections. Okay, moreover, quote, countervailing views, which we refer to as EDSA context, on those remarks are not provided in the video, audio, title, or description. That's crazy. So this EDSA thing is where they're saying you have to provide context and say, yes, we know that that for sure that, that Joe Biden is the president, that da, 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 and that the, you, you have to acknowledge that like throughout the whole thing and have like a disclaimer, I guess is what they're saying here. What? Oh, what the F and F? So here's the letter yep. what they sent to ORF. Okay, again, countervailing views, elections misinformation have been removed from this channel. Holy shit. It's, it's crazy. So we'll go through this outrageous what explanation. The fuck? Thank you, Jimmy Dore. Did wait, did he enter the chat too? No, Jimmy hasn't entered the chat. Jimmy doesn't enter this chat, but I'd love for him to. You oh, want to? Oh, bitches. Nice stuff. Okay, so there are no statements taken out of context. No editing games were played to make it appear someone's saying something. Here, she did not. This was the point of the exercise, to show exactly what was said, when, and by whom. As to their letter, and and I, you know, um, we fight with them, and I, there have been others, like, I know that um, Convo Couch, they've definitely had this happen to them, too. As to YouTube's letter, if indeed their election integrity policy and uh, prohibits content that advances false claims that past U.S. presidential elections were rigged or stolen, then YouTube really should be taking <clears throat> down the first video as well. And that's what I wanted to show was this first <laughs> video. <laughs> Mike McCray, Mike. At, follow at Mike McCray, Mike, at Mike McCray. Mike McRae, Mike, on YouTube. God, you're not allowed to do that if you get the name wrong. You just gotta give up. Right. <laughs> uh, like halfway through, you'd be like, "All right, I give up." Just give up, man. All right, so let's go back here. <laughs> We're gonna show this video. <clears throat> this is the Hunter Biden video. Oh wait, this is the wrong video. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Wait. What we want to do is show this one, the election video first. And then we'll get to the Hunter Biden video afterwards. And that's that's where Jimmy didn't have time to get to in his segment with Orp. But so if we're all in agreement that it is incorrect to say the 2020 election was stolen. What about the 2016 election? Look, I'm not gonna go back into history. It was a stolen election. It was stolen. Stolen. He's an illegitimate president. He's an illegitimate president. You know, pretending to be president. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he didn't. One third of Clinton supporters say Trump election is not legitimate. I right. think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. You are absolutely right. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. The 2016 election was stolen. Got a nicer way to say that? Say Russia hacked the election. Russia hacked our election. Russia hacked our election. A little louder, please. Russia hacked our election. That was a 9-11 scale event. This was a kind of cyber 9-11. Cyber 9-11. Yes. Russia hacked our election. Russia, you know, of course, hacked our election here. Half of Clinton's voters believe the conspiracy theory that Russia hacked election day votes. We know that they were into voting Roles. actual interference with the elections themselves. We know it happened. Despite no, no, no credible evidence, 67% of Democrats believe Russia tampered with vote tallies. Hacking the U.S. election. Hacking the U.S. election. Russia hacked our election. The Russians hacked our election. Oh, Russia hacked our election. Yeah. Russia hacked our election. Russian hacking of our election. Hacking of our, our, of our election. Russia hacked our election. Oh, Russia hacked our election. 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 The universal assessment that Russia hacked our election. Our election 2016. Most young Americans consider Donald Trump an illegitimate president. president. Illegitimate president. He's an illegitimate president. president. Why is he illegitimate? He just won an election. That's Vincent He's an illegitimate president in my mind. That's it.
I absolutely agree. Experts urge Clinton Kemp to challenge election results. We will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. He's an illegitimate president. Russia hacked our election. Russians hacking our election. Hacked our election. Russia hacking our election. I don't see the president elect as a legitimate president. Trump is an illegitimate president who stole the election. He is not a president. He's illegitimate. And my biggest fear is that he's going to do it again with the help of Vlad, his best pal. It's terrifying. Would you be my vice president of Canada? Hillary Clinton voters call Call to overturn election results. More than 4 million people have already signed a petition on change.org calling for the electors of the Electoral College to, quote, ignore their states, votes, and cast their ballots for Secretary Clinton. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. We are the victims of a bloodless coup. He didn't win the general election. Yo, Electoral College, make Hillary Clinton president. Period. Donald Trump is an illegitimate president. Illegitimate president. Dems don't accept Except Trump as a legitimate president. This wasn't on the level. This election was not on the level. I don't think he's a legitimate president. Our election wasn't legit. He got his victory Let's from cheating. Yes, Trump, Trump, cheated. Trump, Trump right? cheated the 2016 election. He's an illegitimate president. No validity. No credibility. Mm. And because of that, anger at what some see as an oh, illegitimate yeah. president. It will not be a peaceful change of power. A number of incidents turned violent. Protesters hurled trash cans, flash bombs, and objects at police. Several officers injured. Protesters threw rocks and smashed windows, leading to more confrontations, injuries, and arrests. The chaotic scene just blocks outside the secure area of the inauguration. If denying election results is extreme now, yeah. why would So let's, let's be really clear. That comparison that you made is just ridiculous. Protests against Donald Trump's election victory surged overnight, and some became violent. Violence erupted on the streets of Portland during the second straight day of protests over the election of Donald Trump. Some protesters launched fireworks and other projectiles at police. Several people began vandalizing cars. Some demonstrators smashed store windows. Protesters faced off with police in other cities too, including Oakland, Denver, and Minneapolis. Violent protests continuing now for the third day in a row. Some 4,000 angry demonstrators over Trump's election victory taking to the streets. Officers in front of thousands of protesters in what police called a riot. Setting fires, taking their frustrations out on cars and buildings. <laughs> People threw projectiles at officers and damaged property as well. I threw a trash can at them because I'm angry. One woman driving through was attacked as someone used a bat to smash her windshield. They are undermining our democratic process, everything that we stand for. People literally have the memory of flies. Like, they, they just don't remember any of this stuff, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, nope. I didn't want to... I remember. I remember. Yeah, so... Uh, Again, shout out to Orf. Everybody <laughs> subscribe to Orf. Follow him on YouTube. He's up to 70, almost 75,000 subs. I think it's Ma Orphalia, right? <laughs> O-R-F-A-L-E-A. Orphale. 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 Orphalia. Orphale. Orphale. Okay. Yeah, he, he does a whole video about it. It's really funny. But we'll go back to the, uh, to the slide and to the article. But this video is, after all, packed with clips of people like Karine Jean-Pierre saying that uh, the 2016 election was stolen. Again, all, all the things that our old pal Keith Olbermann proclaimed the public wouldn't stand for this bloodless school called voting. <laughs> Chris Hayes said Trump cheated. Conga line of officials from Adam Schiff to Elizabeth Warren insisted foreigners had hacked our elections. And these videos made what we believe to be a powerful, legitimate point about the framing of the last two presidential elections. The first is that despite Hillary's reluctant capitulation on election night 2016 the democratic party is, as a whole as well as the officials in the government never recognized donald trump as a legitimate president hillary clinton in fact, in fact spent four years leading a public relations campaign insisting that a she actually won in 2016 b trump only won because of a fraud and actual vote tampering and c democrats going forward should not recognize his victory should he win a second time Everybody, no, none of that happened, right? Our view, it took whether it's Stop the Steal or Russiagate, denying a president's legitimacy because you believe a conspiracy theory is the same behavior and should be treated the same way. YouTube, by administering a strike to ORF, is sending a message that you may leave videos of Hillary Clinton saying we know that they were into the voting rolls, they, they being the Russians, or Oldman warning that it will not be a peaceful change of power, which, of course, we know it was, 
or that the current president and vice president agreeing that their predecessor didn't really win. All of that, YouTube's required Surgeon General type warning called EDSA, which is their clump funky acronym for educational, documentary, scientific, or artistic content. In other words, you may leave up such statements without mm. pointing out that they're unproven, incorrect, or irresponsible. Mm. This is the fact that... Right. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying, except they do. Like... Right. Right. This is the de facto. This is a de facto endorsement of such behavior when committed by certain people. When others do exactly the same thing, it's conspiracy theory, incitement, and even insurrection. Hmm. <laughs> Donald Trump, of course, is running for president. I mean, this goes from yeah, yep. This goes I, from... I mean, with COVID, with like, like we're gonna get into the Hunter stuff, which has been fucking like anyway. And we'll even shout out Garland Nixon, Go on. who got who got censored off of Twitter this yep. week because of a joke about Palestinian people, and and he pissed off Anthony Blinken, who then made a phone call to the State Department, and he got mass reported by NAFO, a uh, uh, clown pedo bots, those stupid Shiba Inu losers that that sit in their mommy's basement and get paid by the federal government to to troll actual people, and and to clog discourse and to. Try to shape a narrative that there aren't Nazis in Ukraine when there evidently clearly are. But anyway, so Donald Trump is running for president again, of course. His behavior after the 2020 vote will become Exhibit A in the case against his reelection, perhaps even rightly so. But YouTube is signaling early on that it will not permit press outlets to compare his behavior and his statements to those of his political opponents. See, now what I think is really happening and, and interesting here is that you're not allowed to criticize the current president. I kind of feel like YouTube mm -hmm. was doing this to people that were censoring, that, that were saying this about Trump during Trump's presidency. It's almost like you're trying to cause an mm -mm. insurrection. No, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I think Trump supporters no, will tell because you that they, did. Uh, they clearly allowed CBS, MSNBC. No, not the other way. Like, no, when Trump won, they, there was constant videos and like. I mean, every joke on on Saturday Night Live, every joke on was Jimmy about Kimmel, Trump. and no, I, 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 like, I get that. I, I know, and that. and how he's didn't win, and how they hacked the elections, and how you know. Yet, if we if we talk about it at all, right? Even so, from a lefty perspective. So this isn't just like, about statements. I mean, the from convo couch has been demonetized for two plus that crap two forever years. since January sixth, basically. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Nico and Slow yeah. News Day. Um, yep. Yeah. This isn't just about statements from individual has-beens like Hillary Clinton, but from official bodies like DHS and FBI. Just like Trump, those official organizations have repeatedly engaged in a form of election denial, warning that upcoming elections would be packed full of efforts by foreign countries to, quote, amplify doubts about the integrity of U.S. elections and to, quote, hinder candidates perceived to be particularly adversarial to countries like China and Russia by quote spreading disinformation. Yeah. These official statements are more or less exactly what Donald Trump is up to when he announces before an election that it's rigged, quote unquote. It's what he was doing weeks before the vote in 2016 when he said, quote, of course there's a large scale voting fraud happening on and before election day. And it's what he was doing on election day when he said the machines you put down a Republican and it registers as a Democrat, and they've had a lot of complaints about that today. Which, by the way, is exactly what happened in Texas. I can tell you, by the way, for yeah. fact, that that boat flipping happened. And that was before things turned his way. The idea is to prepare the audiences to refuse to accept results of a vote should they go the wrong way. If you win, it's the cleanest election in history, which is exactly what the Democrats say. If you lose, the electorate is already primed to throw a fit. It's dirty, unpatriotic behavior, and now it's a routine element of all elections coming from the Trump side and from officialdom. Worse, it's the dirtiest kind of pool to have efficient official agencies like FBI or DHS repeatedly leak that Russia or China prefers Bernie Sanders or Trump and is either trying to sabotage or already succeed in sabotaging elections on their behalf. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, 
What purpose public leaks of such assessments serve? These have a patina of legitimacy because of the organizations involved, but they're as bereft of evidence as Trump stopped the steel claims and perhaps more corrupt because they're so flagrant a misuse of tax dollars. Hard to argue with there. Um, get back to yes, pointing out Graham Elwood has also been demonetized since since then. Um, the press has to be allowed to make these points. If it isn't, Silicon Valley is encouraging one form of, of unethical behavior while condemning another. Moreover, it's punishing the media for factually accurate reporting. There is no explicit or implicit message in force videos that either the 2016 or 2020 vote was compromised. His videos are the opposite of election denial. He's clearly making the point that no matter who does it, denying election results is irresponsible. If YouTube punishes him for that message, it just sends a message that all these bad actors are right and the system really is rigged. Hmm. <laughs> We've asked politely for a reversal of their decision. YouTube must do the right thing here. So this happened on November 18th. So that was about nine days ago. I think it was Friday. On Sunday, Monday morning, I see this. Holy shit. Again, mm -hmm. YouTube censors reality. Boost inf disinformation. Part one. Now, there's no part two yet. And again, please go subscribe to TK News by Matt Taibbi. He also features ORF. He also features other censored content creators. His Substack is a, a kick-ass little outlet, and I'm going to use it as an example of things that you can actually do with Substack because I'm a big fan. Um, he's, do he's doing a podcast. He's amplifying smaller channels and writers. He's bringing in video editing and stuff. He's doing call-in shows. Shout out, you know, again, I've been a fan of Matt Taibbi's for long before since I started doing news. Um, he's one of the people that I really do respect his opinion and, and his take, even when he's wrong. And he can be too, but he's usually right. So what happened? What happened? New news today underscores that they continue to hype fake news. Yes, they do. Why? Because of the Hunter video. So. Hmm. We're, we're, we're going to show this video. And I'm feeling like I may need to. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to put it back. So you might I as think, well I do think it. I can. And then I think if I can. it gets pulled, it's up on Rockfin. I think I can. But anyway. I, we've never. I don't think you can turn the YouTube ones back on once the you, event is over. Cause the do, you remember, do you remember when my power went out in the hotel room and I was able to bring it all back? From like, yeah, that's because you're using Restream in app. Restream. Oh, that's right. Okay. Anyway, so, all right, we'll leave it up, and I'm going to take the risk for INN and for my channel. But yeah, and we want to get if it gets pulled, we'll we'll if put it, it on pulled, Rockfin. We're gonna yeah, except we're 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 getting close to monetization, and I'm I'm really we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, that subs are by now aware. I'm very upset yeah. about, it. and this is Matt Taibbi's recent. He's upset about YouTube's recent decision to censor a factually accurate video about a quote-unquote rigged election comments about ORF, right? As it happens. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to search for new ways to embarrass the company until they reverse their decision. So as it happens, today offers an excellent opportunity. This is three days later. Fuck. CBS This Morning Today came out with a story claiming that they obtained a copy of the, of the Hunter Biden laptop sent for an independent for forensic review and determined that it appears genuine. This follow-up from the New York Times back on March 16th, and more importantly, the exhaustive earlier work of political reporter Ben uh, Schreckinger, Schreckinger, I don't want to mess that up, mm -hmm. confirming key emails in, this, in his yep. book, The Bidens. Matt did an exceptional job, or back in March in the video above, compiling clips of people who went on air and with absolute certainty proclaimed the laptop a lie or altered or fake or pure distractions. And of course, Russian disinformation, all in quotes. Whether or not you thought the actual content of the story was important, the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop affair was a crossroads moment in the history of modern censorship. 
you two played a major role in this event. I say Glenn Greenwald, by the way. This was a case in which yep. major news media, including CBS, NBC, PBS, CNN, and other countless outlets, actively embraced disinformation in the form of a group letter from 50-plus former intelligence officials saying the laptop story, they referred to a laptop op, had the classic earmarks of a Russian misinformation operation. All the aforementioned news agencies fell for this, as did Twitter, which blocked access to it, of course, in what then CEO Jack Dorsey later admitted was a total mistake. They even blocked it in DMs. And Facebook, who's increasingly adrift founder Mark Zuckerberg, later told Joe Rogan the story was throttled down at the suggestion of the FBI. We watched that pretty recently, I remember. I think you might have covered that on INN News. Yep. I think so. YouTube also pushed this this disinformation campaign. It still does. Despite the total absence of evidence from <laughs> ever existing that the laptop was either fake or part of a Russian information operation and a growing pile of evidence that the laptop is real, YouTube continues to leave unmolested its site on its site countless videos promoting the conspiracy theory. That's what it is. Let's be clear that the laptop story is both bunk and an intelligence op. It's a theory. And now it seems that it is more a theory than it was bunk and that it's actually real. So he provides a brief sample of materials that they still have up unmarked as misinformation or disinformation. About are, are they peddling allies from 2020 about the Bidens of a Russian disinformation? And that's on PBS. Mm -hmm. Here's one on Nora O'Donnell on CBS. Here's one on CNN from Wolf Blitzer. Introducing Alex Marquardt, talking about actually could be part of Russia's latest and very massive disinformation campaign in the U.S. presidential election. Okay. I mean, he should have just said, like, huge. 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 Yeah, I know. I was waiting for that. Okay. Huge. Dan Dana Bash. Also, Nicole Wallace starts off humorously, scoffing at the idea. Okay, bashing of disinformation on Biden. This looks, walks, and talks like Russian intelligence. Uh -huh. All right. Suggesting that Biden is a corrupt politician, one of the most vetted politicians of the country. Yeah, the big guy. Uh huh. Jeremy Bash, former CIA chief of staff, now posing as a media figure, concurs. Of course. Again, because they used to just infiltrate the media by compromising the personalities. Now they just put them on TV. This looks yeah. like Russian intelligence. This looks like Russian intelligence. It looks like a classic Russian playbook disinformation mm -hmm. campaign. Uh -huh. John Brennan, former CIA director. You know how he's lying, right? Eve Brennan. Yep. His lips, his lips are moving. It is for all these reasons that we write Ugh. to say the, the arrival on the U.S. scene of emails purportedly belonging to Vice President Sons Hunter much of it related to his time serving on the board of Ukrainian gas company Burisma has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. Mm -hmm. Here it is on 60 Minutes. Leslie Stahl. And all these links are in this article for TK News, which we will put in the description after this show. There are plenty more of these. Again, he's got tons of examples. YouTube and Google now becoming exhibit A and the ultimate truth about any attempt to moderate content at scale. If you make even a good faith attempt, effort to even weed out, quote, disinformation, relying on official bodies to help, what you'll be left with is official disinformation. <laughs> Brilliant. But this isn't mm -hmm. a good faith effort to weed out untruths. YouTube has become a place that, uncens that censors true content, but traffics in official and quasi-official deceptions. Again, you mentioned COVID. It's become indistinguishable from yeah. the State Censorship Bureau. If they feel they're right about their decisions, they should be happy to explain themselves to people like me. Until then, they can expect more love letters from this address. Hell yeah, Matt. Subscribers should know I don't believe in letting things like this go. But I also don't believe in annoying faithful readers. In the future, if there are similar entries in this campaign, I'll make it public, but won't clog your email with notices. The idea is to be painting Google's backside, not yours. Well, share it with me, man. Share it with me, and I'll get yep. it out there. 
because we definitely want to call out censorship too. And again, follow M Taibi. Give it's taibi.substack.com, T A I B B I.substack.com. This is last name.substack.com. It's how you follow and sign up there. Reef is playing the drums because he's got energy. Restream and restream. Don't cross the streams. That's right. Rick, don't cross the streams. Anthony's giving us the hot pepper. I don't know why, but we're getting a hot pepper because something spicy there. Um. Anyway, we've got one more story. Okay, that's good. At eleven fifteen, we're, we're we're good on time. Uh, oh, you know what? I did want to show the hunter the hunter sh uh, uh thing. So let me do that. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Four and a half minutes. And incriminating evidence allegedly found on a laptop belonging to Biden. <laughs> Some sort of Russian, Russian disinformation, disinformation campaign. campaign One eternity later. Biden emails finally authenticated according to the New York Times. Yeah, it's, it's rewind, rewind time. time. It's a lie. That's Altered hot. or fake. Unverified emails. The story did not quite land due to the lack of verification. Listen. Can't be verified. Why can't be verified? The laptop. Why do you say that? Well, because it can't be verified. I don't FBI. even want to report no, this. Well, this is the one of the well, most powerful no, because families in Washington. Liz, I'm a journalist. Okay, I would love you if you guys would start doing that verification. No, we're not going to do your work for you. It's yeah, a journalist's contrary. job. Not anymore. <laughs> well, we know. These emails are made up. Not really stories, so just pure distractions. No serious journalist should fall for it. It's a journalist's job to, to, to find out if this is purposes. verified. The bottom line is we cannot confirm the story. Experts say the emails cannot be authenticated. The mainstream yeah. media is not reporting on this story because we can't Dr. authenticate Smoking. this material. Com um, says so. uh, the Hunter Biden laptop material is genuine. 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 This is a classic example of the right-wing media machine. It just lacks credibility. The fact that it appeared in the New York Post. The only place low enough to put this orphan bastard story in print. Obvious disinformation. It is so obviously a Russian operation. So obviously disinformation. So obviously a Russian plot. Tell me why it's so obviously a Russian plot to you. This is uh, just McPhail. classic textbook Soviet-Russian tradecraft at work. Right, exactly. And this is classic, very classic. Uh, Russian disinformation tactic. Your classic disinformation classic. campaign. We shouldn't look at it as anything other than a Russian it's disinformation like operation. Like operation. operation. Known Kremlin disinformation. Russians would this be my number one guess. Obviously, Russia. Russian disinformation <laughs> operation. <laughs> Russian disinformation. Pushing <laughs> Russian disinformation. It does bear the hallmarks of Hunter Russian Biden. disinformation. Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinformation. Hunter Biden's laptop looks like it's tied to Vladimir Putin in Moscow. <laughs> Well, Vlad, the media shuts us down. It's been, I don't it's know. been real, guys. I, I truly... The, you don't know. The serious yeah. answer is that I truly do not know the answer to that. Did you leave a, a laptop with a repairman not in Wilmington? <laughs> not that, that I remember. No. no. I Where's the eyes bugging at? Are you missing the laptop? Not that I know of. Whoa. Not that I know of. This whole operation looks right out of the Kremlin playbook. Crack. The playbook of so Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation put into the haystack. Russian disinfo. Sounds like bullshit. I mean, who takes a laptop with their most personal information, That's drops it off, is. and never comes back for it? <laughs> you read the book and you'll realize that I wasn't keeping uh, tabs on possessions very well for about a four-year period of time. The Russian disinformation campaign. Disinformation mm. from the Russians. Is that when you were just trying very hard cocaine? to spread? disinformation about Joe Biden. I love the Biden they, campaign says the, this the, is the, Russian the, disinformation. The There's overwhelming evidence that the Russians are engaged. I know, Russians right? are engaged. It's a Russian plan. Russian, Russian like disinformation. Eyes, Nobody so. believes it except the, his and his good friend yep. Rudy Gianni. So could have been yours. Of course. Rudy Rudy. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Course, History history will expose you all as fools and oh, useful idiots for the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> the idiocy. The sheer idiocy. <laughs> 50 former intelligence officials signed on to a letter yesterday saying that the New York Post story about Hunter Biden's emails has all of the classic earmarks of a Russian disinformation campaign. Russia Giuliani. Don't trust anything that he's telling you. This is Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation campaign. Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation campaign. Russian disinformation meant to harm our democracy. Disinformation by the Russians. The fruits of a foreign intelligence operation. Part of that bigger Russian disinformation effort. 
a Russian intelligence operation. He's connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort. Linked to a foreign intelligence operation. Connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort. Tied to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort. Connected to a Russian disinformation campaign. Linked to a foreign intelligence operation. Likely coming from Russian, right, Russian intelligence. Two people familiar with the matter told NBC News. We now know that Russian disinformation or foreign disinformation or even this, you know, campaign disinformation period is as dangerous to our democracy as anything exposed in these emails. Or like disinformation mm. being perpetrated by you freaking clowns in the corporate media who's paid stenographers and paid whores and paid propagandists on behalf of the State Department and the war machine and the pharmaceutical companies. And the automakers to a point, but <clears throat> um, some of the worst people on the planet. So th thanks for that. Um, again, go follow Orf. Go follow Matt Taibbi. Go support their work. Support their channels. We do. Big fans. Appreciate them.